Today, we're going to be ranking every single hypercharge in the game from best to worst, telling you guys which ones to buy, which ones not to. So let's hop into it and let's waste no time. First is Bull's Jaws of Steel, and this is just insane. You reduce 80% of your damage when you dash, and if you combo this with Stomper, which I assume you have the gadget since you already have the hypercharge, then you are just unstoppable. They can't, like, there's just no brawler that can kill you. You can chain super really easily, and you know you're going to get the Bull's uh, hypercharge at least one time per game. Something really important when valuing a hypercharge is knowing how much you get it, which you guys are going to see a ton in this video. So knowing that you're going to get it no matter what, at least one time per game is huge. This thing is unstoppable in heist. You're going to do at least 20-30% when you use it. But if you play it in Brawl Ball or a gem, it's easy to score a goal. It's easy to kill the gem carrier when you get this hypercharge. So this, I would say, is a must-have. I'm going to slide it into the A tier just because I think it's not, like, crazy, crazy game-changing. And I want to keep the S tier super, super elite so you guys know which the by far best hypercharges in the game are. Coming up next, we have Colette's Teen Spirit. So for this, we have Colette's Spirit. I guess it is following Colette's Super which deals, I think, an additional 1k or 1.4k, but that is not what makes this hypercharge broken. It's not the fact that the spirit is actually following Colette during the super. It's the fact that once you pop your hypercharge, you get a 30% speed buff, a 25% damage buff, and a 15% shield buff. What this does is it just absolutely shreds anything in your path. You're moving super fast. If you pop your healing gadget and combo it kind of like Bull's Hypercharge with Stomper, you're basically unkillable. You can chain two supers very, very easily, and no one can even get remotely close to you. It's playable in a lot of different modes, but I think Colette's Hypercharge only makes it a lot better in Heist. So for that reason, I'm also going to give it the A tier. I know both of our brawlers got A tier to start off, and that's a little bit boring. Colt's Dual Wielding is also pretty good. I mean, it's pretty basic, just like the rest of Colt's kit, so I guess it's kind of fitting. All it does is it makes Colt Super 120% wider, which doesn't seem that good. But because you have the speed buff, you can also kind of just auto-aim and do whatever you want. It's super easy to hit, and... Once you get this hypercharge and once you pop it, you can just run right at your opponent and auto him in the face because you're doing like 900 damage a bullet. It's absolutely absurd. The thing is, it's not absolutely game breaking like Bulls is. And Bulls, we gave A tier, so we're being super harsh right now. So we're going to slide Cole into the B tier. Again, it's not bad and it's actually pretty good and it makes Cole an actual viable brawler, but it's just not game breaking enough. The next hypercharge we have for you guys is Crow's Utility Knives. And I know I have mentioned this guy's name in every single video. But Lex, this hypercharge also sucks, bro. I mean, it literally takes forever to get. You're lucky if you get one in an entire game. So you compare that to something like Bull, where you know you are guaranteed to get one. And that's already a huge difference. Add on the fact that Bull's hypercharge is also better than Crow's. And you know kind of where we're heading with this. Now, Crow's hypercharge can be good. You have to actually jump behind the players if you want to get good value out of it. But to me, it's not a good enough hypercharge that I would use it differently than I use Colt's where I could just pop my hypercharge even if I don't have my super and just make my actual brawler better for a little bit. Unfortunately, this hypercharge sucks and we are going to put this in the F tier and it's probably going to be the worst hypercharge that we covered today. Okay, so I didn't actually know that Dinah's hypercharge name was Boomer, but that's pretty fitting. This one is broken. So with this hypercharge, Dinah's super bomb not only basically one shots every brawler on the map as it does 6,000 plus damage, I think, but it also spawns these like little like fidget spinner looking sticks and they are very hard to dodge. The key to dodge them is to kind of go close to the middle, except the issue with that is if you're getting close to the middle of a Dyna Super, you're just going to die. So it takes really good timing. It's really hard to juke and they charge his super really easily. I'm pretty sure they charge 50% of a super per stick. So if you hit two sticks, I mean, he's got another hypercharged super and you are screwed. On top of that, just like Bull, these are really easy to charge. I mean, Bull, you literally charge by getting hit. So this is a little bit more skilled than that. But you can charge these super, super easily and get two or even three hypercharges a game. And I know Lukey Bear is going to kill me because he wants his brawler to be skilled. But honestly, I'm going to put the Boomer hypercharge in the S tier. This thing is just broken. Coming up next is Edgar's Outburst. So this is pretty broken. If you can get a hypercharge, honestly, I would probably recommend getting this hypercharge. After using super, you gain charging speed and reload speed for a few seconds. So if you combo that with also using your let's fly gadget which charges your super you can actually chain i'm not exaggerating four or five different jumps with just one hypercharge it is absolutely absurd 
Another good part about this hypercharge, again, is that you are going to get this once a game no matter what. So this is just a really good hypercharge all around. There is nothing wrong with it, and we are 100% going to put it at the very, very top of the S tier. Coming up next is Fang's Dragon Kick, and just like Edgar's, this one is really good as well. The hypercharge is literally you just charge through walls with your super. Like Fang, but you can charge through walls just doesn't make sense and is unfair. Now, thankfully to the Brawl team, they kind of nerfed the charging you get for it. You used to be able to get like two to three a game. Now it's kind of hard to get one a game, so it's not as as good as it used to be i would definitely say this is the number one hypercharge before but because it got the nerf i'm gonna put it at the very highest of a tier i just don't think it's at the same level as the s tier ones anymore yeah it's really good and it can probably team wipe you know what it probably will but edgar's and dinah's you're gonna get at least two or three times a game fangs you might not even get once next up is jackie's seismic event and this one is also pretty good so jackie's super that's for some reason named holy moly i didn't know that slows down enemies for 1.5 seconds but again just like the other brawlers i'm using this more so for the stat buff than the super itself if you're close to your Jackie super and you have your hypercharge button and you know that getting hit is going to charge you your super because you are Jackie, that's how Jackie works. What I do is I pop my hypercharge and I just run at them. They're going to charge my Jackie super because they hit me and then all of a sudden I have a Jackie super, I have my hypercharge popped, I pull them towards me and there is no way they can get a kill. With Jackie, just like Bull, you're kind of guaranteed to get one just by taking damage. And although it's a very good brawler when it has the hypercharge, I don't think the hypercharge actually lifts it up that much. So because of that, I'm going to put it in the top of B tier. Now, I'm being a little bit hard on Jackie. I mean, it is a really good hypercharge and the brawler is really good again when you use it. But I don't think it's actually elevating the super that much. I think it's just elevating the brawler a little bit. So because of that, we're going to put it in the B tier. Coming up next is Jesse's Scrappy 2.0 and I... I absolutely love this hypercharge, but not for the reasons you guys might think. When you click a hypercharge, your brawler gets a stat buff. And this stat buff makes your brawler basically unstoppable. So what you want to do with the Jesse hypercharge is when you have it, get one or two shots away from super, click your hypercharge, and then run at the guys. You're not going to die if you have full HP or if you're just smart enough to not die. You auto aim them, you're going to easily hit your shots because you have a hypercharge, you can walk right up to them. And then you then throw the turret either on their face or either on the opponent's, someone else's face. Now, this still isn't that good of a hypercharge. I'm going to put it in the C tier, but I would put it in D along with Crow if you didn't use it the way I explained it. So please at least try it. And if it works, let me know. Coming up next, we have Leon's Limbo. And this is just broken. I mean, this is just super good. You heal and can shoot and can do everything while you're in your super. Like, it just makes no sense. Like, you are invisible to the point where even if someone sees you, they can't even really see you. And I know that doesn't make sense. But if you've played against the hypercharge, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. The hypercharge just makes Leon so good. And honestly, I think it's the second best hypercharge in the game right behind Edgar's. But it is very, very close. So we're going to put it at the very, very tippity top of the S tier. The next hypercharge we have for you guys is Slushy Storm. And this one is also pretty dang good. I mean, it was definitely in the S tier before. But now I think it fell off a tiny, tiny bit. Now the hypercharge didn't actually change. But the amount of shots that it took to charge super did that's the reason why loose hypercharge was so good early on you could get it so easily just like dinah's just like edgar's which is at the very top of our tier list but because they tweak that down it's a little bit harder to get you used to also be able to throw your one hypercharge loose super on some dude and then from killing that you got a second hypercharge super that you could just throw on another dude so it's just like what do they even do now though you can't do that so it definitely got a little bit worse i'm gonna put it at the bottom of the a tier i kind of want to put it in the b tier but it's not that bad it's like a guaranteed kill if you hit someone so how am i gonna put it in the same tier with jackie and cole i don't really know up next we have macy's aftermath and i mean this is just a must have it takes macy from a you know kind of good brawler to a really meta amazing brawler again the stat buffs for some brawlers are very significant and macy is one of those brawlers i mean the stat buff that you get from this super is just unreal you move so fast you can basically like kind of teleport around the map with the dash and the speed and just everything you got going on and it's kind of like a spike cactus or a spike shot where if one of those little well, they're not really little because they do 3,000 damage. But if one of those shots hit from the aftermath of the Macy Super, it charges up your Super again. And I mean, it's just over for the other team. We're going to put this above the Dyna Hypercharge, but below the Leon Hypercharge. I think Leon's actual Hypercharge is better. But Macy as a brawler, I would say... Oh, I messed it up. Is 
probably right on par with Leon. Honestly, Macy and Leon are basically tied. They're interchangeable. They're both super, super good. And I don't know, this is a must have. Coming in, we have Miko or the monkey, however you call it. We have his sound check, and this is a very, very good hypercharge, but not the way you think. So what this does is you activate it before you use your super and jump into the air. And then once you land, you stun your opponent for 1.5 seconds. And I mean, that's great and all, but that is just useless. If you're landing on someone from the air and you have three saved up shots and you're going to take their ammo if you're using the correct star power, then they're dead anyways, and that's completely useless. That doesn't change anything. I'm looking at you, Lukey Bear. So what you want to do is you just want to use this, you know, just while you're hopping around on people. It's just going to make you do 3,000 damage. It's going to make you take a lot less damage. And in this clip I got for you guys, I know it's not the best representation of it because this Doug just absolutely annihilates me. But that's how you want to use it. It just basically gives you another OP ability that you want to cycle in between while you're jumping around in the air with Miko Super. So because you use it kind of like Jesse's, Colts, and Jackie's, and you don't actually combo it with the Super, we're going to put it in the same B and C tier, but we're going to put it in C because I just don't think it's that good. Honestly, guys, I have no idea how to say the name of this hypercharge, so I'm not even going to try. Next up, we have Pearl's hypercharge. So at least according to the definition, it says that you let out some steam and it leaves a burning area behind it for 4.5 seconds. That is just a lie. I don't know who is using this hypercharge to do that, but what it basically should say is it makes your brawler go faster and do more damage. Again, these are one of the hypercharges that you're not going to use for the actual super. You're just going to make it to buff up your brawler a little bit. And so because of this, we're not even going to talk about this too much. We're going to put it just above Crow at the top of F tier. How you want to use it is once you kind of, I'm just going to call it Rage because I'm used to Rage from Ash. Once you get that full Rage, that full bar, and you do the most amount of damage, you're going to turn on that hypercharge. You're going to turn on your burning cookies, whatever they're called. I don't know what they're called. And you are just going to spray the other team for as much damage as possible. I mean, it's not useless. It's definitely better than crows and it makes your brawler basically unstoppable while you're using it. But I mean, actual hypercharge wise, this is the best, hi or sorry, not the best, the worst hypercharge in the game. And I wouldn't buy this if I were you guys. I would honestly get any other hypercharge. It's just not that fun. Honestly, I don't know what it is about these challenging words. And I don't even want to try to attempt this one either. My mom is actually going to kill me when she watches this video and sees that I can barely even speak English. But next up, we have Charlie's hypercharge. So this actually seems a little bit useless at face value. What it does is it is the cocoon spawns three spiders that seek and attack the nearest enemies. So it's kind of basically like a gadget, but you want to use this exactly like you use Jesse's. Right before you have a super, once you have that hypercharge locked and loaded, you want to click it and you want to run at your enemy and just start to spray auto aim. You're going to get your super really easily from doing that. And then you're just going to auto aim whoever's closest to you. And it's going to spawn at the very least three spiders. And hopefully you hit the cocoon as well. And you're going to hit a cocoon and spawn three spiders. You know, three spiders doesn't really seem like a big deal. But once you have one of the opponents in a cocoon, and then the other two guys have to deal with two of your teammates, you with a hypercharge and three spiders, they're screwed. This is actually a pretty good hypercharge. It doesn't have any crazy effects and it's nothing insane, but it's pretty good. And we're going to put it at the very bottom of the B tier. Coming up next, we have Rosa's Grasping Roots. And this is actually surprisingly pretty good. So when this just came out into the game, I was like, well, this is kind of dumb because you have a gadget that slows enemies and you have a super and speed gear, which if you're supering, you're right beside someone anyways. But what my small brain didn't fail to realize is that you also get a 20% speed buff. So when you pop this and you have the slow, you can chase down enemies so easily. Now, this is actually a really good hypercharge. And again, just like other ones, you could use it even without your super so that you can get your super through using the hypercharge. That's kind of what I do a lot. And because of that, I'm going to put it at the very top of B. It's pretty interchangeable with Jackie, but I'll put it at the top because I like Rosa to play a little bit more than I like Jackie. So why not? But this is a pretty good hypercharge. I don't want to say it's top 10, but it's currently looking like it. So I guess it's a borderline top 10 hypercharge. Next, we have Shelly's double barrel. And this is also really good, except Shelly kind of sucks. So, you know, how good can this really be? They tune down the supercharge that you get from a Shelly super. And that kind of nerfed the hypercharge as well because you don't get it as much. You get it like once a game. So it's okay. And you're kind of like guaranteed to get it. 
but it's not really that strong. I'm gonna put it in between Jesse's hypercharge and Miko's hypercharge. And I mean, Shelly's a fun brawler, and a lot of you guys probably have level 11 Shelly as one of your first level 11s if you have it. So you probably can get the hypercharge if you want to. It's not horrible and it's fun. So if you want to keep playing Shelly as your main brawler, I'm not going to say don't get this hypercharge, but there are definitely a lot better hypercharges in the game right now. Last but definitely not least, we have Blooming Season and we all know what this does. It makes the hypercharge, or I guess I should say the spike super, bigger it makes it purple which is cool and it's just really easy to hit and absolutely destroy someone if you get someone close ish to the middle of your spike super it's already basically over for them if you get them close ish to the middle of your spike hypercharge super it is game over and you're gonna chain hypercharges and you're just gonna get a second super that's gonna be huge as well it's insane area denial it's one of the best supers in the game when you pair it with a hypercharge i know like whoop de doo so is every other super um, and I honestly don't know where to put this. I think I'm going to put it at the very top of B tier. I think it's kind of interchangeable with Jesse as well, but I think this is the correct place to put it. If you guys disagree or think one hypercharge is too high or one hypercharge is too low, let me know in the comment section below. I want to interact with you guys and see what you guys think. But honestly, I think it's pretty good, so I'm not sure. So that's going to be it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, like always, like, comment, subscribe, and I will be back soon. And until then, peace.